Wow, we are back again. It is still undergraduate tutorials, a beautiful program designed for beautiful and handsome people like you. Once you are a science student in university or you are offering a science related course like engineering, this program is for you. This is still Physics 101 in, of, of science, uh, of undergraduate tutorial rather, sorry. And we are still looking at dimensional analysis. And our business today is to look at the third aspect of dimensional analysis. Today we shall be looking at how we can find mathematical relationship between quantities using the principle of dimensional analysis. So finding mathematical relationship between quantities using our dimensional analysis. Now we, we know that there are so many mathematical expressions or formula that connect different quantities. For example, we say that energy is half mv squared. That's energy, kinetic energy is this. Uh, we can use dimensional analysis to actually establish this. Yes, dimensional analysis can be used to establish expressions like this. And that's what our business will be in this particular class. So how do we use the principle of dimensional analysis in establishing mathematical relationship between quantities yes it's not only in marriage that you have relationship anyway so you also have relationship in sciences yeah mathematical relationship in marriage they have other relationship emotional relationship we are not here for emotions and the feelings and passion we are here for mathematical relationship in, in physics yeah so let's look at how dimensional analysis can actually help us so those that are having problems in their marital relationship can also use the principle of dimensional analysis to settle their problem. Don't mind me. So let's look at how we are going to go about this. What are we expected to do if we want to find mathematical relationship between quantities? So we say, let's look at our steps again. The first step, identify the dependent. and independent quantities. That's the first step. Then write or express or express the dependent quantity as product of dimensionless constant CK and the independent quantities assign unknown powers using letters to the independent quantities <coughs> to the independent quantities and express them in terms of fundamental quantities. Okay? By equating powers of similar terms, find the unknown powers then substitute the values of the unknown powers to obtain the relationship wow that was beautiful that was beautiful. That was very beautiful. So we are going to take this uh, 
five solid steps. In order to find mathematical relationship between quantities using the principle of dimensional analysis. So let's take an example. Example one. If we have the period T of oscillation of a pendulum. Pendulum ball depends on the length L and acceleration G due to gravity. Find the relationship between these quantities. Okay, the period T of oscillation of pendulum ball depends on the length L and the acceleration G due to gravity. Find the relationship between those these quantities. Now, we are going to follow these steps and then we'll be able to obtain the mathematical relationship between them. So, let's begin. Do not be afraid, I'm going to give you power to trample on this and no dimensional analysis will by any means harm you after now. So let's look at that. Identify the dependent and independent quantities. So here, the period T of oscillation depends on this. So the period T is the dependent quantity, while the length and the G are the independent quantities as far as this uh, question is concerned. Okay? We have done that. Write or express the dependent quantity as a product of what? Dimensionless constant, say k. We can use any other letter for k, but we can use k here since none of these are uh, as the symbol k. So, dimensionless constant k and the independent quantity. So, the dependent quantity t, we are going to write it as a product of this dimensionless quantity k and the independent uh, quantities. So T is equal to K L G. Okay? That's another step taken. Right? What's the next thing we are going to do? Very simple. They said assign unknown powers using letters to the to the independent quantities and express them in terms of fundamental quantities. So Let's assign powers to the independent quantities. So I can call the power of this uh, of this B. Then we have to express all of them in terms of fundamental quantity. Where period T has the same dimension as time, so we don't have problem with that. So T is still equal to now K. L of the length is still the same dimension. Acceleration due to gravity is length per time squared. All of them has power of what? B. Okay? So if we bring it down, we are going to have K L of that. This will give me L to power of B and then T to power of minus 2B. You remember power of power in indices. This L raised to power B. This power will multiply the powers here. So the power of L here is 1. So B times this is that. B times minus 2 is uh, minus 2B. So that's how we arrive at this. Now, we need to simplify further because L and L, we can use the principle of indices. L times L, L raised to power A times L raised to power B. Remember the first law of indices. So T should be K L A plus B, then T raised to power minus 2B. Okay. Then I'll say, since we have simplified that, by equating powers of similar terms, find the unknown powers. Now here, we don't have L, we don't have, we have T or no L. What it means is that the power of L here is going to be zero. So it means that the period, this dimension, can be written as M raised to power zero, L raised to power zero, and T 
and t because l raised to the power zero is one, m raised to the power zero is one. One times one times one we times t. We just give us t. We did that in one of our videos when we are talking about writing density. Then we used it to illustrate uh, that of density. So we can write this as k l a plus b t raised to the power minus two b. Why we did this is to enable or see the power to equate. That's why we introduced this. Very important, you need to take note of that. So, by equating the powers now, M did not appear here, so it doesn't consign us. So, L and L, the power of L here is over, the power of L here is, is A plus B. So, we have two unknowns. We don't know A, we don't know B. So, we need to see if we can find any of them for finding the other. So, we'll come to this place, the power of T here. Power of t here is one, while the power here is minus two b, minus two b. So that means b is going to be what? Uh, is going to be minus. Okay, it's going to be one over minus two. So b is minus one over two. Then we can find we can find a since zero is equal to a plus b. So it means that a plus b is equal to zero. We have found b to be minus one over two. So this plus minus one over two equals zero. A minus one over two is zero. So a is one over two. That is zero plus one over two. A will give us one over two. So we have found the unknown powers a and b. What is left for us now is to get the is for us to get uh, the relationship by substituting the values of the unknown powers. So we return here to our original expression t is equal to k l the power of a is half oh, sorry a has value of half so the power of l here will be half and then g has value of b so the power of g is b and this value is minus half so this uh, so we can write this as t equals k l raised to the power 1 over 2 divided by g raised to the power 1 over 2 remember when you have negative power in indices it's the same thing as the reciprocal so t will now become k into l over g all raised to the power half so t is equal to k l over g all raised to power half yeah they have common power so one can write it using square root sign because any number raised to power of half is something as square root of that number or square root of that term if it's a term so this can be written as k square root of l over g all right that's how we can actually find the mathematical relationship between quantities from here now, you, you can agree with me that the normal, the formal, formal expression we use when we are doing simple harmonic motion is, is just similar to this. So this k, which is a dimensionless constant, will now stand for what? For 2 pi. Wow, that's beautiful enough. We shall go on a break. Yeah, I know that you are trying to figure out a lot of things. But when we return from this break, we are going to solve more examples so that you will be able to understand or be able to know the everything that we have done so far as far as this aspect of dimensional analysis is concerned you need to you know fall in love with mathematics a little if you are going to uh, do well in this aspect of dimensional analysis especially as it concerns your indices because i know the little algebra here is not a problem solving equations like this they are not problem but you need to remember those laws of indices for you to actually excel in this area of dimensional analysis all right we shall go on a short break and when we return we have more examples to solve thank you and god bless you